Hello everyone, welcome to this edition of Vet Talks. My name is David Adeye Adedokun. I'm a 600 level student at the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine in Usman Danfodi University, Sokoto, located in Nigeria. I'll be talking on the topic Mosquito, a useful biological tool in the hands of zoonosis in Nigeria. The outline of this topic of discussion is as follows. Number one, system of classification of mosquitoes. Number two, characteristics of mosquitoes. Number three, important zoonosis transmitted by mosquitoes in Nigeria. Number four, incidence of mosquito borne zoonosis in Nigeria. Number five, we'll look at why Nigeria actually supports the thriving of mosquitoes when Nigeria is a haven for mosquitoes. Number six, how mosquitoes transmit diseases. And number seven, measures that could be taken to eradicate mosquitoes in the country. I'm looking at the system of classification of mosquitoes. Biologically, mosquitoes belong to the kingdom Animalia, Phylum Arthropoda, class Insecta, order Diptera, suborder Nematocera, family Coelicidae. And, and there are three genera of importance in the country which are Anopheles, Aedes, and Culex. Let's look at the characteristics of mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are small slender flies with long legs. They are two winged insects. Generally, insects in the order Diptera have two wings. This enables them to fly from one place to another. Mosquitoes have long proboscis, which is their mouth part, and it projects forward from their head, and they use it in biting their susceptible host. Scales are present on the wing veins of mosquitoes. Interestingly, the female and male mosquitoes can be differentiated through the form of their antennae. Mosquitoes are holometabola, which actually means that they undergo complete metamorphosis in the course of their development. We'll be looking at important zoonosis transmitted by mosquitoes in Nigeria. I will be talking about two of these zoonosis, which are dengue fever and yellow fever. Interestingly, so many Nigerians actually think Malaria is the only mosquito born disease, but this is not true as mosquitoes can, could also transmit very deadly diseases like dengue fever and yellow fever. Dengue fever is the most important mosquito spread viral disease and it's of major international public health concern. Dengue fever is a self limiting disease found in tropical and, trop sub and subtropical regions around the world, predominantly in urban and semi-urban areas. Dengue fever, also known as dengue hemorrhagic fever, is a potentially lethal complication and it was first recognized in 1950s during the dengue epidemic in Philippines and Thailand. But today, dengue fever affects most Asian countries and is a leading cause of childhood deaths. Dengue fever is actually caused by dengue virus, which belongs to the genus Flavivirus and family Flaviviridae. There are four serotypes. When a person is infected by one serotype, Infection by another serotype increases the likelihood of suffering from the actual disease. Talking about the epidemiology of dengue fever, dengue fever is actually endemic in about 100 countries, including countries in Africa, in Southeast Asia, in the Americas, and so on. Those areas in red as you can see on your screen, are actually countries that are at risk of dengue fever. 
transmission of dengue fever is basically through the bite of an infected female mosquito of the genus Aedes and species Aegypti. Humans are the main amplifying host of this virus. After a virus incubation for 8 to 10 days, an infected mosquito is capable of transmitting the virus to susceptible individuals for the rest of its life. Let's look at the clinical manifestation of dengue fever. The incubation period for dengue fever in humans is usually within five to six days. Then the clinical features vary according to the age of the patient. It's very much deadly in young patients, that is children, than in adults. The chart displayed on the screen shows the cause of dengue illness and from day one to day three there is this manifestation of fever day four to six is the critical stage of the disease and as i said earlier the disease is self-limiting and the recovery phase can be between seven to ten days after which the disease vanishes and that's all This also shows how um, the incidence that happens in each of those um, three phases of the disease. In the febrile phase, there could be dehydration, high fever, and febrile seizures, which are seen in young children. In the critical phase of the disease, there could be shock due to plasma leakage, severe hemorrhage and organ impairment. In the recovery phase, there could be hypervolemia, and this could only be seen if intravenous fluid therapy has been excessive or has been extended into this period of the disease, of the cause of the disease. Talking about laboratory diagnosis of dengue fever, it could be done through serology, that is the demonstration of the immunoglobulin M antibody or immunoglobulin G antibody in the system. It could also be through the isolation or detection of the virus or antigen. Virus isolation actually could be done and fluorescent antibody tests could also be done to actually prove the presence of dengue fever in the patient. Talking about treatment for dengue fever, there is no specific treatment for dengue fever. Although in handling cases of dengue fever in patients, this is basically drawn, done symptomatically. Antibiotic agents could be administered against fever and analgesia could be given against um, pain and so on vaccination there's no effective vaccine presently available for dengue fever prevention and control of dengue fever this could be done by combating the vector which uh, mosquitoes in this case it could also be done through surveillance of the disease in a particular area to actually know if there's been cases of dengue fever and so preventing others from contracting the disease let's talk about yellow fever yellow fever is one of those zoonotic diseases that could be transmitted by mosquitoes about 15 percent of people infected with yellow fever develop serious illness those are tricks of yellow fevers are actually those who travel to some parts of africa and south america 
as you can see on your screen those areas colored yellow are depicting countries that are at risk of the disease yellow fever in Africa the theology of yellow fever it's caused by yellow fever virus of the genus flavivirus and family flaviviridae transmission yellow fever is transmitted through the bite of infected mosquito of the genus Aedes or the genus Hemagogus. The reservoir for this um, disease in urban areas, humans and Aedes mosquito mosquitoes are reservoirs for yellow fever. In forest areas, humans are also reservoirs, including other vertebrates, mainly monkeys and um, possibly some marsupids and forest mosquitoes could actually be reservoirs for yellow fever. Also, there could be trans ovarian transmission in mosquitoes. That is transmission from a female mosquito to a progeny. And this contributes in the maintenance of the infection. The clinical manifestation of yellow fever it takes um, three to six days to develop which is the incubation period and symptoms that could be seen include fever chills headache backache and so on the prevention and control of yellow fever is just like in the case of dengue fever and it includes the control of vector which are incriminating agents in the transmission of this disease and also through the surveillance of this disease in a particular area interestingly the location of my university which is Sokoto State has experienced an outbreak of dengue fever in the year 2016 where several people actually lost their life and it was really a disaster. I would like to talk about um, some of the reasons why Nigeria is a haven for mosquitoes. Number one, I'll talk about the temperature. Cold weather can cause mosquitoes to hibernate. Hence, Nigeria provides a good ambient temperature for the survival of mosquitoes. The weather over here is very warm and mosquitoes actually love the weather. Moisture, which is the second point here, presence of standing water encourages the breeding of mosquitoes. Number three, dark colors. Mosquitoes are attracted to dark colors, not only black because dark colors absorb heat and lighter colors tend to reflect heat. Mosquitoes have highly sensitive heat sensors and are attracted to dark items and places. Nigeria is still a developing country and so you could find out that sometimes um, there will be no electricity and hence you find an area being dark therefore mosquitoes will actually be found there because they are attracted to dark places or dark colors talking about the economic status of citizens some citizens actually can't afford the purchase of mosquito repellents and insecticides and some cannot even afford the purchase of mosquito nets which could keep them away from mosquitoes. Then lastly, I'll talk about negligence or illiteracy. Some people do not have the basic information of what could harm them or benefit them. Some don't know that um, having stagnant water around you could actually bring mosquitoes closer and so on and so forth.
so that's why nigeria actually is a haven for mosquitoes here are pictures of areas around the university my university and um, these pictures actually are showing areas where you find stagnant waters and so you will definitely find mosquitoes in that area. Here's another picture um, to the left you find an uncovered soak away which actually could support mosquito in that area. To the right you find the environment being dirty and also with little water there which could actually support mosquitoes. Yeah, this last picture actually shows um, this particular area. It's dirty and um, also you could find um, animals just roaming about. At night, this area, if there's no light, will be very dark and so definitely mosquitoes will actually be attracted to such areas. How do mosquitoes transmit diseases? We've actually talked about them and they transmit these diseases through their bites. They actually bite individuals and they transmit the virus into individuals and so diseases manifest. Measures that could be taken to eradicate mosquitoes in the country. This could be done through the education of the public to tell them that mosquitoes are actually dangerous, they could transmit diseases that could affect their health. Secondly, is through the elimination of breeding places for these mosquitoes, removal of stagnant water, and so on. Number three, mosquitoes could be killed through the use of space and residual spraying. This involves the use of insecticides. Um, sleeping areas could actually be screened through the use of mosquito nets to avoid mosquitoes from biting individuals. And lastly, avoid exposure to mosquitoes. Always um, make sure that you are on clothing that could keep mosquitoes away from you. Here are some useful links from which um, information were gathered to compose this presentation. Thank you for listening.